let's have a look at a couple of really important A-level physics questions. So imagine that I have a few pendulums over here. Let's start off with pendulum A, and then I'm going to add a few more of various different lengths. Let's imagine that uh, they're connected via a rigid rod, for instance. And let's number these from one, two, three, and four. If I was to set pendulum A in oscillation, which one of these will have the greatest amplitude? Choose an answer now. This question is resonating well with me. I'm sorry, that was kind of terrible. But when I was to, if I was to set off this pendulum in oscillation, this will become the driver of the oscillation and it will be driving the other pendulums with its natural frequency, which becomes the driving frequency. And remember, the frequency of a pendulum will be given by one over two pi, root of g over l, where l is the length and g is just the gravitational acceleration. So in practice, the frequency of a pendulum only depends on its length. Now, Resonance occurs whenever the driving frequency matches the natural frequency of an object. One is going to have a very different natural frequency because its length is different. Two will also have a slightly different natural frequency, but three has exactly the same natural frequency. So in the case of three, the driving frequency and the natural frequency match. This means that resonance will occur and three should have the highest amplitude. Let me know how you find this problem in the comments. Now, normally I would call it a day and be done with this video, but I hear that you guys have an exam tomorrow, so let's do another one. There was an old exam question which was asking about a paper cone like this. Now, imagine that we have a paper cone and we set it to oscillate up and down in the vertical plane. And let's have another one like so, but we're going to add a metal ring onto it and that metal ring will just increase its mass but will not affect its cross-sectional area very much. If we set both of these in oscillations, in which case will the damping be more significant? Which one of these two cases is more heavily damped? Without the ring or with the ring? Choose an answer now. Hmm, so without the ring, what we actually have is just a paper cone. Now, what is causing the damping force? It is air resistance. Air resistance is going to have much more of an effect on lighter objects. I mean, look at this, if I have this tissue and if I just drop it down, it's not gonna fall as quickly compared to my <laughs> whiteboard pen. Quickly compared. Therefore, the work done by the resistive forces, i.e. air resistance, will take more of a proportion of the energy of the paper cone because air resistance will be the same or very similar because it mainly depends on cross-sectional area, assuming that they're moving at similar speeds. So the correct answer is that we have heavier damping without the ring. Solving problems is fantastic, but what you also need to do is make sure that you don't do mistakes. And in this video, I've summarized all the most common A-level mistakes by looking at the examiner's report. So you need to have a look at this video right over here.